Iggy Pop is considered to be the originator of what is called punk rock today. Now that doesn't sound like I'm being nice, but that is really what it is called, and he rather likes that. We'll discuss that with him. And he's collaborated with another innovator, perhaps the most famous of today's new musical talents, David Bowie. They collaborated on an album, and here's the result of that creative effort. One song from it now, and another later on. Uh, David Bowie is at the keyboard, and this is a song from the album called The Idiot. Please welcome Iggy Pop. Be a little bit uh, keyed up now. I know. That's kind of hard to come down from. It's difficult to, to break back out of. Of course. I'm going to call you Jimmy. Sure. If I, may. I appreciate it. Jimmy, when you do two and three shows a night, mm -hmm. uh, uh, how do you how do you come out? Usually, when we work, I do that mm -hmm. for about an hour and a half. <laughs> Good. Yeah. You've known each other for years, haven't you? Yeah, for mm -hmm. six years. Where did you meet? What inspired this? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you meet? In a bar. In a bar. New York. New York. <laughs> yeah. You sure? We were, we were both unrecognized at the time, so we had a lot to, you know, in common. But, right. but you knew that you, but you were both interested in music. Yeah. No, not music. I mean, whatever, whatever you uh, call it, you call it music. Yeah. What do you call this? Well, punk rock. What is punk? This isn't music. It's nothing to do with punk rock. <laughs> what is it? Explain to me what it is. 
Um, <laughs> well, it's not... Uh, my understanding of punk rock is uh, something that's happened in England, I think, really, over the last couple of years. But uh, what Jimmy was doing... Uh, I'd never seen Jimmy, really, but I'd heard some of his albums. And uh, it sounded like, uh, uh, I don't know, nihilistic rock. It was nihilism. But well, that's Which true. fascinates me. Well, um, well, I love nihilism. <laughs> well, well... I just we, love philosopher talk. <laughs> no, but that, that, that's interesting. The, uh, it's uh, a little remote from reality at times. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. Oh, come Not on. at all. No. No? No. 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 But now, in your collaboration, what do you consider... You, uh, what type of music do you do then, Davis? M myself? Mm -hmm. um, well, oh, I don't know. Ask Jimmy. <laughs> now, what kind of... You had heard... I'll tell you his what is, you his is a bit up there. What I do. Yes, it a is. A bit more airy. Yeah. My, my, my music is just basically, I look for things to tear apart, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good to whip. Mm, over, you know, that's very you easy. You don't even think about it uh, before you do it. Uh, it just happens, doesn't it, when you... Well, not what a does. Jimmy did when we were in a... Do you mind me talking? No, no. Um, you sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the studio, Jimmy would um, make up the lyrics on the spot, and we would keep everything that he did, mm -hmm. and uh, occasionally change a line after we recorded. But J Jimmy, I'd, I've never seen anybody be able to make up lyrics so fast just out of his that head to a track, and That's it's awesome. more like a, uh, I guess uh, he'll hate me, but it's it's more like a. The, the beatnik era mm -hmm. thing with you see well, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a retreat i mean it's it's it's, it's a very spontaneous a kind of lyric it's, it's not like a written thing at all with jimmy but whereas no. mine so i spend months writing one word yeah. that, then i have to look it up and see how to spell it <laughs> <laughs> which is what most of us have to do no but david what i mean is you recorded Iggy first, or Jimmy first? No, 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 no. Iggy already had two albums out on his own that he'd done himself. I um, see. And, the, and then the, the um, general favor went, went, went against Jim because of what he was doing at the time, it seemed. Uh, that Would you, you describe some about. of the things you were doing at the time, which were the things that I had heard about? And well, I was doing, what I was really, I was doing songs like I Want to Be Your Dog, and mm -hmm. No Fun, and uh, Search and Destroy and Raw Power, which has since had a child's toy named after mm -hmm. it. And, and, uh, but you were doing things to yourself physically that were... Yeah, and to other people, too. Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I was uh, bored. <laughs> bored and angry, and uh, when I couldn't, you know, when, when things would get so... when something that did demanded action every day, would keep pestering my mind and I couldn't do anything about it. Finally, sometimes I would give up and just resort to simple violence. On yourself, though, mostly? Usually on myself, because I hated to do it, take it out on other people. I thought that was wrong. That's considerate. Yeah. I thought I was, no, honestly, I thought I was being more considerate. Yeah. So often I would, I would do to myself what I wanted to do to someone else. I mean, like, for instance, you, you poured hot wax on yourself once. Yes, but that, you see, that didn't hurt. It didn't hurt? I, no, it doesn't. It just... Well, well, and no, I didn't know at the yourself. time that it wouldn't hurt, though. But you cut yourself with a bottle. Yeah, well, that was because I'd, I'd done something really foolish the night before, and I was ashamed. <laughs> I, had left, I, had left a, I had left this 13-year-old girl at, an, at a strand at an airport uh, on the East Coast, and she was from the West Coast. I and I thought, that wasn't right to do to her. No, that's not right. So, right, so I got up on stage and I, I thought, well, what is a fool, what is a, a horrible person like you doing up on this stage? This is all wrong. And I felt so bad that I thought, ah, the heck with it, and I grabbed a glass. And oh, Jim, But that was, well, I've, I've since, I've had treatment for that sort of thing in a sense. <laughs> yeah, it helped a lot, you know. Jimmy, that's a It's rough better to be able business. to laugh about it now. Well, yeah, that's really a hard See, way to See, I knew, I'll it. tell well, you. Rosie was saying, we were saying, you know, you yeah. burn yourself with the hot rollers when you're on the road. <laughs> yeah. Burn your hair, but it's about uh, the extent of it. But, but to do what you did, to It's always, yourself. no, listen, it's, it sounds funny, but, um, yeah, it is funny. It's really funny. <laughs> now, David, yeah, I know. No, I was going to say something very that. heavy and, and no, meaningful, but, but I no, can't. I know you. <laughs> you, <don't dare. laughs> you saw Iggy perform. What was your I never reaction? saw Iggy perform. I, just heard, I just heard the okay. albums, and uh, then I must admit, somebody played me a, a videotape of uh, a performance that he did with um, 
um, the, uh, his original band, The Stooges, mm. and uh, I didn't like it very much because I uh, because then I saw the violence, and it's not what I heard from the lyrics. But oh. your your music, when when you I mean you have a lovely, as you say, sound way up I'm here. I'm a cyborg. My, my stuff is, is very different. Mine comes from sort of up to from sure. there, yeah. and Jimmy's comes from about here down to mm. <laughs> <laughs> about there. You know. I don't know. I wonder what he means by that. <laughs> Gee I don't know. I'll ask you later. Okay, kid. Okay. I'll tell you. No, <laughs> no what, I, what I want to know, what was the audience's reaction when you did those things well, to, to them or, or to yourself? It would depend. You see, I did a lot of very good shows then, too. It's like anybody that's reaching sort of like that. Sometimes you'll do incredibly good things and not mm -hmm. know it. So sometimes the audience would literally just go nuts, and they'd usually get very demonstrative. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would all pass out. <laughs> they did? Yeah, they took There's a not lot much of much response when they do that. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they would sometimes they would just uh, if it was a room this size, uh, they would all press themselves in groups against the wall as far away as they could get from me and just they'd watch in horror, but they wouldn't be able to leave either. Yeah. They would have they would be sort of fascinated. You can talk about it now, and you've had treatment. I can talk about it if yeah. it's required. It's not my preferred I subject. Oh, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. I just, but do you feel that in your music you had a chance, coupled, coupled mm -hmm. with the violence, to contribute something? I think I've contributed something else. Yes. I think, yeah. yeah. In, what you, in the statement in your music, or in what you were saying about yourself and in the violence I, you perpetrated on I don't know about that, I, but it must have been something good that I've done. Oh, I'm sure of I that. Think, I, don't I mean... think perhaps just that there are a lot of people who have enjoyed what I've done mm -hmm. for a long time, so that's good enough, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Do you feel you've influenced anybody in the... I think I helped wipe out the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I would say that. Yeah, that's good. David, how about you? Oh, uh, what? Well, <laughs> you know what I do? You, um, you, you have been working with Iggy now, yeah. and you're a very modest man you're <laughs> sitting there at the keyboard, and one of the conditions on which you came today was that you would not sing a solo, and that you would not talk about David Bowie, and we're friends, and I understand, and I respect that. But what happens with David Bowie uh, if, if you're going to continue to uh, sublimate your particular talent? Can you... Can your ego stand there? Okay, fine, right. Well, can I, two, yeah, two ways of approaching that. Firstly, is that uh, one thing which uh, 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 I want to get, I want to get straight, right. is that, that um, the collaboration that Jimmy and I have had has been something because I was intoxicated with, uh, with, with what I thought Jimmy stood for, and um, I would never, ever want it to be considered mm -hmm. that I was some kind of hand manipulator or Svengali behind okay. what Jimmy's doing now That's because right. he's getting popular now mm -hmm. it's only because he's six years too early mm -hmm. what he was doing six years ago was just the same you talk music There's nothing yeah. musically, yeah. Um, musically his presence okay. what he was doing on stage was was exactly the same it's just that ha I happen to be concerned with it now mm -hmm. because I um, I stayed with it okay. so firstly for me it's a great ambition because I th th there was something with Jimmy that I hadn't seen in rock and roll which was a kind of a method I, I can't explain it. A method poetry, as a, it was uh, an unleashing of, of um, parts of the the animalistic yeah. kinds of rock that you never really see. It's always usually safeguarded and very, very safe. And sometimes and Jimmy programs excited yes, what he was doing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And it probably has nothing to do with rock and roll. I think it has more to do with with uh, with um, with method. Method and a human statement. Yeah, I think uh, no, not a human statement. No, just no. method. Jimmy has a a method. Uh -huh. Um, so that's my concern, and I have nothing else better to do, and uh, I've never enjoyed a tour as much as I'm enjoying this yeah. one, just playing keyboards, because I think it's uh, the, uh, as fulfilling as any, mm -hmm. any of my tours. The interesting thing, because it, now, this never... I've developed an American accent. I must lose that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds terribly American, dear, to me. But no, what, the interesting thing, because I notice that a lot of the rock artists and the country artists will uh, play as sidemen on a temporary day, a basis, on a recording session. Mm. 
with other performers. But I have never seen them do it to this extent, but you are now helping to produce uh, Jimmy's albums. Yeah. Uh, but what happens with your career? Oh, that's fine. I'm, 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 it'll, it'll move along. Exactly the way. I am very rich, you know. <laughs> yeah. I can afford it. Yeah. Um, well, I, guess, I guess if you're willing to, you know, just wait out, and I, I, I don't see the necessity of doing a tour of my own until I want to do one. Yes. Not for the bucks. I'd much prefer to do one because I want to do a tour. Then I prefer to do something that, that really excites me, and playing piano behind Iggy Pop for me is very exciting. Well, see, and now it, that's it, wonderful. Just, you know. and, and that's the kind of thing uh, that usually managers and agents and people like that, uh, they say grab it while you can because the public's taste is whimsical and it changes. Mm -hmm. But uh, for you to say that you can... So oh, public taste doesn't change. There, there is only, there is a just, it's, uh, there's a particular, a hardcore point in the public that, that there's a, a valve, a, a, an emotional point that, that can be touched in two places. It's either on a spiritual level or a gut level. Mm -hmm. And that, that will never change ever. No, I, I agree with you, but the audience to whom you appeal occasionally will, will be fickle or they will move to another group. Oh, but if you well, touch them em emotionally in one way or the other, spiritually... I think Jimmy and I believe in our audiences a lot. Yes. I, don't, I don't think we're concerned very much. Too much. Well, that's great. Very much. Yes. Um, be right back. You, let's we both use this mic. Sure. Uh, funny, you, we were talking earlier, you, and you said you had never done television. Before. No, this is the first time. Interesting medium, isn't it, with all the cameras between yes, you? And people are so far. No, but they're not that far. If you could have, they were with you every second. Really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Weren't you? <laughs> they're loving it. That's great. You're originally from Detroit. Yes, near Detroit, Ann Arbor. Yeah. yeah. Near Detroit, Ann Arbor. Yeah. Intellectual city. It is, of yes. Of course. Yes. Did, the, do you, did the music uh, of Detroit have much of an effect on your music? The, uh, the industrialism in Detroit. The, what I heard, yeah. you know, wandering around was... <laughs> there are 10 cars, <laughs> 20 yeah. cars, and so on and so forth. Sure, forth. of course. I wonder if we all realize how much we're affected by... I doubt it. I, uh, I get a lot of my influence, like, from the electric shavers and... Uh, <laughs> it's true. You really do? Yes, and from... Uh, <laughs> No, it's true. No, but it's funny how the sound... You don't realize how the sound... Is. What did you do to those nice people out there? They believe you, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, no. Oh, they do. Uh, are, are you, how do your parents feel about you working without your jacket on, Jimmy? They, they don't mind. They don't? They like what I do very much. That's great. We're very close. What does your dad do? He uh, teaches communications and media at a high school. He does? Yes, yes. <laughs> What do they call, do they, when, when they find out that he's Iggy Pop's dad, what They call him Mr. Pop. <laughs> <laughs> and they look at him. And they say, I mean, I, but you don't look like Iggy Pop, is that does. what they say? And how about he does your, a bit, actually. Does he really? Yeah. The blue eyes? Yeah. How about your mom? She's uh, an executive at the Bendix Corporation. They make the they make missiles and bombs and I, all that good stuff. <laughs> but it, yes. <laughs> I'm just trying My to reconcile help the war effort. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to reconcile a picture of your dad, a teacher, and your mom uh, with the Bendix Corporation, yes. and 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 you here with the, these interesting. Would you? <laughs> I mean, I've got to know what their reaction is. They they when they first saw you perform, what did they say? They didn't say much. <laughs> Stayed in a state of shock. Yeah, but as uh, as time went by they uh, got reconciled to the fact that this was what I was doing. Yeah. And then as my teeth started to fall out and things, and they'd help me replace them, you know. And Your teeth started to fall out? <laughs> yes, they all fell out. At Did one you point. eat too much candy? I was getting too violent on stage. And... <laughs> you just, you got David on the floor. <laughs> you were kidding. Watch your teeth, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 I mean, you were... Now wait, I gotta get this straight. You, your teeth were falling out because you were getting too violent on stage. Yes. Uh, were you hitting the microphone yeah, or the floor? Yeah, mostly from from the microphone. And you couldn't very well Sometimes do without it. The floor. Sometimes the, the floor and the drums. The other musicians, you know. With your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> There's a school of thought that thinks I could hit anybody with my teeth, but they, they right? But, it, it, introduce the members. Yeah, of the, I'd love to. This is uh, well, this is Tony Sales.
Tony Sales? And his brother Hunt, Hunt Sales, Sales. Or his brother Tony, whatever. And their their they dad know. is uh, is one of my favorite uh, artists, uh, Soupy Sales, the comedian. You Now you're putting me no, on. No, I'm not. These are Soupy's boys. Oh, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> did you really no. That, well, now i got to ask you, what, what does your dad say? How does... He likes it? That's good. And you're, well, it's your dad, too. He likes it, too. Yeah. <laughs> and this fellow over here, he's from uh, Scotland. His name's Rick Gardner. Hi, Rick. Welcome. Yeah. And, and you can introduce me to the piano player. Yeah. And this is David Bowie. Yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> I think I'd know him anyway. <laughs> uh, he's not from Scotland. No, he's not. Well... Listen, you gonna are you gonna do another number now? We'd like to. If we Great. Could. What are you gonna do? Uh, it's called Sister Midnight. Sister Midnight. It's from my new album, The Idiot. Yes, and I think you. <laughs> I got it. Okay, ready. <laughs> Iggy Pop. <laughs> You've got me reaching for the moon. Calling since the midnight. You've got me playing the fool. I'm calling since the midnight. Calling since the midnight. You know I had a dream last night <laughs> Potatoes were in my bed So I made love to them My father, he gon' call me He ordered me with a six gun well, I call it Sister Midnight What can I do about my dream? Come on.